iPhone 11. Can we change the screen? Hey, Bay. Where are we going today? Cambridge. Why are we going to Cambridge? Going to the Apple Store. Apple Store. Mm. And what do they have there? They've got their brand new phones. Brand new iPhones. Brand new iPhones. Should we get some? It's a good day. It's a sunny day. Let's go buy brand new iPhones. Sunny day. Let's go and buy brand new iPhones. Do you okay with this? The wife says we can get two new iPhones. His and hers. His and hers iPhones. And uh, we have to say what everybody says in a, in a YouTube video. Uh, we're excited. We're excited to get these new iPhones. Today, I'm so excited. We're incredibly excited. Well, today, we're excited to tell you. Is that right? This is crazy. <laughs> are you excited to get the new iPhone? We are so excited. I'm, I'm very excited in a British reserved way. Yes. Mm. We're excited. This iPhone has a genuine Apple display. Right, so let's have a little bit of a sit down, a little bit of a sit down, and um, let's get ready to talk. Okay? Yeah, what, what are we doing here? Me and Helen travelled off to Cambridge to the Apple store where we purchased two new iPhones. The cheap versions, the cheapest ones, iPhone 11, not the Pro, um, 64 gigabytes, the lowest storage capacity available, uh, cheapest price available, 729 of your UK pounds. And why are we doing that? Twice. Two of them. We brought two of them. And. Um, we do it because we feel we kind of have to really and that is because we're in the business of repairing these products and sooner or later customers are going to bring us an iPhone 11 and ask us to fix a broken screen so of course we will duly oblige um, but this is going to show up some sort of issue because um, in our screen repairs generally what we use is um, a genuine Apple LCD. And how we achieve that is by refurbishment. So we'll take, um, we'll take screens that have originally been fitted to iPhones in the factory, they shipped with the phone. It's an original Apple screen. Um, it gets dropped, it gets cracked, the glass is broken, but underneath the actual physical working display is all still okay in some cases. And rather than us just throwing this in the bin, we put in a lot of time and effort to take this broken glass off. We clean up the LCD. Um, this is one with the glass taken off. And so all we have to do now is we, we use these machines at the back here, and that allows us to put a new piece of glass on the display which we can then fit to your phone. You've still then got the original Apple display, which is the highest quality ones on the market. Yes, it's a lot of time and effort to, to go through on our part, but we 100% believe that the effort is worth it because we wouldn't want anything else fitted to our phones other than the best. Um, aftermarket displays vary in quality. There's some really, really bad ones. There's some really, really good ones now 
over the last few years things have been improving but we still you, you're never going to beat the original so if you're fitting original parts to iPhones you would assume that you're never going to encounter any issues especially when you know you're a recently certified Apple technician you know that's for iOS devices so that's iPads and iPhones We've got one for the Macs as well you know and if we're fitting what was originally fitted to iPhones at the factory you should never come across any issues or should you the reason why we've gone and done what we've done travel down to Cambridge bought the phones yeah we had a little bit of a husband and wifey day we've enjoyed ourselves whilst there we had a meal a little punt down the river on some little boat thing quite nice and, uh, and then we come back so I've got the phones on my desk and um, do what I do best and that's certainly not making videos but uh, I've taken the phones apart and they straight from the box they had iOS version 13 on them 13.0 and that was that so I took them apart like that I swapped the screens over and everything was fine no issue so I put them all back together as they originally were the screen that came from this screen went back on that one and the other one went back on this one and then I plugged I plugged just one of the phones into iTunes and I let iTunes update the, the phone to the latest version of iOS which I think was 13.1 or 13.1.1 they've released a few updates over the last few days but um, yeah so it did that it all went through and then again I took this original screen from it and I put the screen on from the other one I started the phone up and sure enough as I expected the reason why I went and brought the phones uh, a notification pops up and it says you know, word for word I don't know I can't remember but it's basically um, giving me a message that the display fitted to the phone um, they can't verify that it's a genuine screen which um, is a little bit strange because seeing as I only just purchased the two iPhones direct from Apple in their shop <laughs> yes you don't get a more genuine screen than one you've just brought from Apple Okay, I couldn't just buy the screen on its own. Apple don't allow that. I had to buy a whole phone. £729. I had to buy the whole phone to get another screen to fit to the phone to try this out. So I've done that. I really hope a couple of you buy these phones because I don't want them and that's a lot of money to me. So come, come, come and buy some new iPhone 11s. Yeah. Um, yeah, so... I'm certified by Apple. I've brought genuine Apple stuff. I've put it back here. I, I removed the screens. I've swapped them over, and the phone tells me it's not a genuine screen. So either Apple have sold me some aftermarket screen, and the phone knows about it, and it's telling me, "Hey, this is not a genuine Apple screen. This is not high quality. What are you doing?" Or they've got. I suppose there's a there's a chance that they've made a mistake or just poorly worded their um, their notification or they're simply just hitting out uh, uh, everything if your repair is not done and then you've had the phone plugged into Apple's computer system and had some sort of calibration going on to make sure that notification stays away then no matter what you do you're gonna have a problem now this doesn't matter whether you're fitting some 10 pound junk piece of screen from eBay or you're actually fitting the best of the best direct from Apple if you haven't got their special little computer to, to calibrate the phone you're gonna get that warning that says the phone's not genuine now does this matter yes and no I think yes it does matter because a lot of people are going to get their phones repaired outside of Apple's network. That's just the way the world works. Apple charge what they charge to repair phones. Some people go and pay that. 
Some people pay for Apple Care, and some people do that. They always will. Other people don't, and they perhaps never will. I, I would never do that. I'd never take my phone to Apple. I, I enjoy taking them apart and doing it myself. That's why I buy iPhones, because I can do that with them. They're, I, I enjoy taking them apart. I enjoy playing with the insides of them. Sad but true. I, I would never take mine to Apple to get that done. Not because they do a bad job, they wouldn't. I, I wouldn't want to pay for it. My wife breaks her phone all the time. You think I'm going to go to Apple every time? <laughs> no. It's probably why it's probably why I learned how to do this. To save myself a bit of money in fixing her phones. But there's always going to be people that are going to come to me and others like me. There's fantastic repair places all across this country, all across America, all across the world who aren't authorised by Apple who do fantastic work and they're always going to but this now creates a trust issue between us and our customers and so the purpose of the video was for me to take the genuine phone take the, the genuine screen it doesn't get more genuine than going into an Apple store and buying it and swapping them over directly in front of you and it, at the end of this video where I've edited everything to try and make it short I'll probably stick the whole process down at the end so that if anybody does want to they can go through and watch it and see exactly what I did. Um, and I just want the general public I suppose to know that this message is either a mistake and Apple might correct it and if it's not a mistake I mean it's it wasn't there in iOS 13 and it's appeared in the next couple of updates 13.1 13.11 whichever the notification appears and it doesn't just randomly appear somebody has sat down and programmed that into the operating system that's they've physically had to work to get that in there so what it must do is check the serial number of the display that was fitted to the phone originally and when it senses that that serial number is different it flags up a message now that can be good because if I was buying a second hand phone yeah I'd want to know if there wasn't a genuine screen on there uh, you know I'm happy if I've got the genuine screen or battery I think it does the same with batteries but if my phone's going to alert me the same the same warning even when there is a genuine screen on there I'd say, what's the point in this feature anyway? It's not doing any good. All it's doing is causing unnecessary panic and alarm. I don't think the world needs more unnecessary panic or alarm. I certainly don't need panic and alarm in my life. And if that's the direction that Apple are going to drag my life in, then I will I'll quit that and I'll move my life in another direction without panic and alarm. You know? Yes, it's a simple notification. Am I overreacting? Yes, maybe no, I don't know. But I, I'm getting like this because I care about these things. And as somebody that repairs these devices, as somebody that looks after my customers and tries to give them the best that they can possibly get, um, I don't want them being alarmed by some notification that is either poorly written, intentionally untruthful, however you want to look at it whichever way the truth of the matter is it's it's not an accurate message and I don't want my customers to to, to doubt the things that I'm telling them and the things that I'm trying to show them because I, I'm trying to be as transparent as humanly possible with everything that I do um, and it, but, but you are Apple you are the makers of this product and then suddenly if my iPhone is telling me that something's not right, alarm bells are ringing in my head. And who should I trust, Apple? Or dodgy Dan down the street who's fitted some screen he's told me he's genuine. <laughs> oh, very smartly played, Apple. Very smartly played. But, come on. Fair's fair. Let's, let's, just, not, let's just not do this, eh? Let's just not. Anyway, so 
I've outlined the, the purpose of the video here. I've tried, I've tried to mess around with camera angles and music and sound effects and whatever, just to try and make it a little bit more interesting because I'm very aware that I usually just hit record and work. And nobody wants to see that. I've got an important message to, to put out there, so I've tried to make it at least a little bit entertaining. Um, it still isn't my strong point, but uh, I, I've enjoyed I've enjoyed trying. I did feel like an absolute tool um, in the shopping center with a camera. I had to be that guy. <laughs> I'm sorry if you were there and had to witness it. Um, you know, what do you feel about what's going on? Um, are we really moving towards a more environmentally friendly um, pursuit here with messages that potentially discourage repair? Is everybody really going to go into Apple's network and pay the much higher prices for the repairs? Um, do you all value having other services that can fix your device um, to a high standard without the ridiculous price tag? Um, yeah, I mean, if you want to, let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel, and um, I have quite enjoyed this. I'm going to try put a little bit more effort into these videos, and. Um, Try, try and make them a little bit more, I don't know, easy on the eye to watch, I suppose. Uh, so thank you, everybody, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much. So if you're putting your own milk in there, you get some sort of warning from McDonald's that this is not not genuine because they didn't put it in. You need to take your tea back into McDonald's and have them run some sort of calibration. True fact. Calibration check on your tea. Yep. Make sure it's genuine. It's not genuine. It's not genuine cup of tea now, look, because I've added my own milk in the stick. They'll probably come after you and sue you because you use a non-genuine tea there, potentially non-genuine, even though all the stuff did come from McDonald's, potentially non-genuine because McDonald's didn't put the milk in and calibrate it. Um, and you're, yet yeah, you're using a cup which holds the McDonald's M.